Hi, it's Dave T here, and if you've seen some of my recent videos, you will know that I recently purchased a Victron Smart Shunt as part of the upgrade to my caravan solar powered 12 volt system. In this video, I'll explain why you may need a shunt, how a shunt works, and also how it's installed. I'll also give an overview of the Victron Shunt and discuss some of the shortcomings I actually found with it. If you are staying in a caravan or motorhome, and especially if you are not connected to mains electricity, then you are likely to want to know how full your ledger battery is. There is usually a meter to show you this, either as a digital number, a set of illuminated LEDs, or even just an old fashioned needle gauge. Regardless of what it looks like, this will almost certainly be showing you the voltage of the battery. Voltage is a very simple way to measure the capacity of a battery. In other words, how full it is. All batteries have a maximum voltage that they reach when completely full and a minimum voltage at which point they are effectively empty or at least should no longer be used. The problem with voltage is that it is not really an accurate measure of capacity. If you watched my video on electrical theory made easy, you may remember me saying that voltage is often described as pressure. Using that analogy, then you can see in this animation, making a hole in a water container, as the amount of water decreases, then the pressure reduces and so the length of the escaping fountain also reduces. The problem is that if anything else is happening with the battery, such as another device drawing current, then this is completely confuses the measurement. So as you can see, using voltage to determine the fullness of a battery is far from accurate. Lithium batteries actually exacerbate the problem because their chemistry means that the difference between 95 and about 20% is actually a very small difference in voltage, and then it drops steeply towards the end of discharge cycle. A shunt, however, works by measuring the current that goes in and out of a battery, and so can use the balance to determine the remaining capacity. Now a shunt works by measuring current and to do this it is placed directly in the circuit so that all power used in the circuit goes through it. Because even the cables in a circuit can actually consume current, it is recommended that the shunt is placed at the very end of the circuit, so typically at the negative terminal of the battery. Like almost all conductors, the shunt has an electrical resistance, but importantly it is very low, so as not to consume much power from the circuit. Even more importantly, it is a known resistance. Any resistance causes a voltage drop, and so the shunt can actually measure the voltage drop across the shunt's conductor. This very small voltage drop can then be used with the Ohm's law equation of volts equals amps times resistance, which is swapped around to become amps equals volts divided by resistance. In this way, the shunt calculates the current is going through it, and therefore through the circuit. The shunt's processor needs to be told the full capacity of the battery and then calibrated when the battery is full. From that point forward, the shunt simply keeps track of exactly how much current has been extracted or added, and therefore the true remaining capacity. This is not affected by other things happening in the circuit and is therefore far more accurate. Actually installing the shunt is quite a simple procedure. I removed the negative leads from the battery terminal and instead connected them to the negative terminal of the shunt. Because my existing connectors were 6mm rings and the shunt's terminals were actually 8mm, I made a short buzz bar out of some copper stock and an off-the-shelf cable was then shortened and used to connect the shunt to the battery. There is also a low gauge wire that connects the positive terminal of the battery to the provide power for the shunt's electronics. The standard Victron Bluetooth app is used with the shunt and pretty much all other Bluetooth Victron products. Scanning for the new device and connecting is pretty much automatic, but there is one additional step if, like me, you have another Victron device such as a solar controller. This is to create a local network and attach both the shunt and the other device to it. By doing this, the solar controller and the shunt can communicate with each other, which can then improve the performance of the overall system. And this is why I found the shortcomings in the system, but more of that in a bit. On a basic level, having all of the devices accessible through the same app makes viewing data about the system as a whole much easier. The shunt displays via the app the current state of charge, the battery voltage, and the current flowing through the system. 
This is effectively the balance of current, so shows a negative value if you are using more than is coming in, or if your usage is low but you are receiving a good solar current, then it will be positive. The history page for the shunt only displays some basic odometer style values, such as the last, deepest and average discharge, which really is where I think we start to come on to where the shunt disappoints. I had already purchased and installed the smart solar unit and once I had installed the shunt it became clear that of the two siblings the solar controller was very much the smarter of the two. The solar controller stores up to 31 days of data such as yield, consumption, maximum minimum battery voltage and bulk absorption and float times. Conversely the smart shunt stores only those basic aggregate values which was quite a disappointment. Now please don't misunderstand me, because for measuring the energy consumption and showing current battery capacity, the shunt performs admirably. Also, as a developer, I can understand that the processing power of the, and the onboard memory of the shunt itself is likely to be limited. So as a standalone unit, it makes perfect sense that the shunt can only display current, pun intended, data. But when you consider that the shunt is linked via Bluetooth to the solar controller, it seems that an opportunity has been missed. The solar controller evidently has onboard memory to store historical values and the ability to make them available to the app. I'd like to see Victron make use of this by allowing the solar controller to receive information such as daily battery max and min state of charge, uh, total energy use per day, and perhaps even the temperature re readings from the optional temperature sensors. All of these should be achievable through a firmware update, which by the way can be performed very easily via the app. There are alternative ways to record this sort of data, such as connecting a Raspberry Pi or other simple computer to monitor and store the data. But the off-the-shelf solutions Fitchon already offers is so close to doing that job that building this functionality in really would, in my opinion at least, be a great idea. There you have it, the Victron Smart Shunt, like most of Victron's range, is well built, functional and easy to use. If you want an accurate measure of how much remaining energy is in your battery, then it is well worth having. And this is especially true if you are using lithium batteries. I really would like to see Victron provide firmware updates for the shunt and solar controller to store that data. And they do have a pretty good track record of making updates, so here's hoping. But regardless of that, I can certainly recommend the product. I hope you found this video helpful or interesting and if you have then please click that like button and if you're interested in seeing other videos that I make then please do consider subscribing to my channel. But most of all, thanks for watching.